Hello and welcome to another episode of our walkthrough tutorial. In the last walkthrough tutorial, we saw how we can set up and configure some of the shipping settings in Google Merchant Center platform. Now, in today's walkthrough tutorial, I would like to demonstrate briefly how you can configure the actual shopping feed for your products in the Google Merchant Center platform or now as per the updated name and the dashboard, it is known as Google Merchant Center Next. Why is it essential to configure a shopping feed? Well, it's important because it enables you to showcase your products effectively in the Google search engine, as well as any kind of shopping ads you're running through the Google Ads platform. Now, if you provide details and accurate information about your products to the Google platform through the Google Merchant Center or Merchant Center Next, then you ensure that your products appear in the relevant Google searches. Hence, their visibility gets increased and you attract potential customers, which of course then boosts your sales. So without further ado, as always, we are going to work on a test account. So let's get started. Firstly, you just need to make sure that you are logged into your Google Merchant Center or Google Merchant Center Next account. That could be done simply by typing merchants.google.com in the Google, and then you sign up with your regular Gmail or Google account. Once you have reached this particular dashboard, this is the newer version of the Google Merchant Center. Now the dashboard has slightly changed. I will speak about the relevant changes within this video, which are specific to configuring the shopping feed and to have an overview of the products or to have a look at the issues associated with the products. So firstly, if we want to set up a data feed or a shopping feed, how do we do that? Usually, if you have a Shopify website, you can install an app in the back end of a Shopify website called Google and YouTube. You can set up your Google Analytics 4 platform there, and you can link your Google Merchant Center with that particular app. Now, once that is done, your products will automatically be integrated and synced with your Google Merchant Center account. And how would you know that that has happened? It is done through an API. And if you just simply go to the top right of your screen and click on data sources, Under the product sources, you will see this particular option if you've done it through Shopify. It is known as the content API. This is usually for the Shopify websites. And once you see that, you will see that all your products have been synced from the backend of the Shopify website. And then of course, they will then be submitted to Google for the review and approval, which usually takes 48 hours around about that time. Now, if you have any other kind of CMS, for example, you're handling WordPress, there are several plugins which allow you to create the XML files or generate XML files in the format which is specified by Google Merchant Center. And then you can import that XML file into the product sources of the Google Merchant Center or Merchant Center Next. And then you can set up when does the file update? How often does the file update? Does it update at all or not? Those are all the options which you can configure. But generally, this is how it is done through the backend of the website CMS for the most popular ones. Now, if you're wanting to add the data feed or the shopping feed manually, for example, you have gotten the link to the XML file, which has been generated from the backend of your WordPress website, how do you add that in Google Merchant Center next? Because it doesn't happen automatically like Shopify. So you simply click on the data sources on the top right of your screen. Then you come to this section and click on add product source. Once you have done that, add products from a file. That's the first option which you're going to select. You can enter the link of your XML file. You can choose the edit schedule option and automatically it will update the file as per your schedule. If there is any kind of authentication associated with the XML file, say it was not from the backend of the WordPress, it was uploaded on an FTP server, 
then you would want to enter the authentication credentials, the username, the password, or the port number here. And then from there, you can just go on with this method, continue, select your country, select the marketing conditions, and then set up your feed. However, if you have a small number of products on your website, say one or two, and they do not update very often, their pricing remains the same, then you can also upload the feeds manually through the use of a Google Sheet template. Usually we do not recommend that because anything which is updating automatically through an XML file, through the backend of the website, that is always recommended. Any changes you make, they get synced into the Google Merchant Center once you have configured your feed initially. So if you're wanting to do it manually, you simply click on this particular option. And then if you click on use template, you will be provided a template by Google. There are so many attributes within this template, which you will need to set up for your product. Once that is done, once your file is ready, then you simply upload that particular file. You just have done that. So you've entered the details here. It is up to date then it would allow you to continue from here and then just give Google a few hours, 48 to 72 hours to review and approve your products. These are some of the ways how you can configure the shopping feeds within Google Merchant Center, the automated way and the manual way. Now, what if you were not on the Google Merchant Center next platform? How would you set up a feed there? So instead of this button on the top right, which says data sources, you would have the option under the selection criteria here, which is called the products. If you would click onto that in the previous version of the Google Merchant Center, you would see an option called feeds. And once you click on that, there will be another option called add feed. And that is how you will add your feed in the Google Merchant Center, the older version. Now, majority of the Google Merchant Center accounts are being migrated by Google automatically to the Google Merchant Center next platform. It's much more refined, looks nice, has a lot more options, insights, so on and so forth. So this is how we will essentially configure the shopping feed in the Google Merchant Center next platform. If you have submitted your feed, what is the next step for you? The next step is to keep an eye if your products have been approved or not. In the Google Merchant Center next, you can simply go to the overview section and under the product status, it will show you how many products have been uploaded through your feed. Have they been approved, not approved? What is the status of them? In the previous version of Google Merchant Center, you can see it under the section called diagnostics. So that is how you will see the status of your products. Now, if you click further more into it, if you click on view more under product status, you will be able to see which products have been approved, which products have not been approved. Obviously we would be interested in the disapproved products. So you would click onto them and see what's the reason behind it. Are we missing any price? Is the template which we uploaded through the sheets or through the XML file or content API, it's not correct anything is missing, any images not working, you fix those issues, you refresh your feed through the data sources section and then resubmit the product. That is how you will get the updated version and then Google will review it and approve it eventually. So this is a very basic overview of how you can upload your Google Shopping feed through various manners. Of course, it's much easier through a content API from the back end of Shopify, it automatically keeps on updating everything for you. Similarly, with an XML file, whether you're using WordPress or you have generated it for your website content management system through the FTP server, you can just upload the link of that FTP file here and you can update that on your schedule. So that's much more convenient. With the manual way, by uploading the products through the Google Merchant Center feed sheet. This is the template. You can do so, but you might have to make changes again and again to the sheet to make sure that your product is up to date. Another important thing, once you have uploaded the feed in the Google Merchant Center platform, the option for automatic improvements 
it is under the product section. So you just have to make sure that all three options, prices, availability, and condition of the products are selected. They are updated automatically because Google bots crawl into the website and they check the stock, the condition, the availability, the prices, and update it automatically. So you might not have to do that even with the Google Sheets. So that's a good thing for you, saves time. Similarly, in the previous version of Google Merchant Center, this option would not be available under products. It would be available on the top right-hand side, a similar logo when you would click on it. On the left-hand side, it will show you the option automatic improvements. You simply click onto that one, and that is how you will enable all the automatic improvements for your feed. So this was a very basic overview of how you can configure and upload the shopping feeds in Google Merchant Center or Merchant Center Next in case you're wanting any assistance because usually Google Merchant Center creates a lot of issues when you upload products. It suspends the Google Merchant Center account. It disapproves the product. Any kind of issues you're facing with the Google Merchant Center, with your Google Shopping ads, performance max campaigns, please get in touch with WebWonks. We have the right experts who can assist you with all your issues. So we'll be looking forward to hearing back from you. Any kind of feedback, please put that in the comment section. If you like the video, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. I will see all of you next time. Thank you very much.